What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to talk about properties of absolute value. So here are some properties to know, and let's get started. So first, let's evaluate a few expressions. So we have this one here, and what I notice is we have absolute value, and we got a whole lot going on on the inside. Now, I like to think of absolute value almost as like a set of parentheses. So we're focusing on the inside here, but what I would do first is deal with each of those absolute value terms on the inside. So this is going to be equal to, we would have absolute value, and the absolute value of negative 6 is positive 6. And then we have minus the absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. And now we just have to simplify. This is going to give us absolute value of 6 minus 2, which is 4. And the absolute value of 4 is equal to 4. Now next up here, we have division going on. So what we're going to do is we have negative 1 divided by the absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. And now we're just doing negative 1 divided by 1 is negative 1. So for question three, there's a few ways we could do this, but probably the easiest way to do this is to simplify the inside first. You have negative one third times negative 18 is positive six, and the absolute value of positive six is equal to six. But another way to do this where you could show the properties is we could break this up into, this is the absolute value of negative one third times, and then we would have the absolute value of negative 18. And now this, we could just work out, is gonna be equal to the absolute value of negative one third is positive one third times the absolute value of negative 18 is positive 18. And notice 18 divided by three also gives us six. So the fastest way to do this one is just to simplify. We would have absolute value, seven minus 12 is negative five over 12 minus seven is equal to positive five. And now we have the absolute value of negative five over five is negative one. And the absolute value of negative one is positive one. So this is one way, but if we really wanna see the properties here, we are also allowed to call this the absolute value of seven minus 12 divided by, and we would have the absolute value of 12 minus seven. And then if we simplify this, this is absolute value of negative five over absolute value of five, which is five divided by five, which is also equal to one. Now five has a little bit going on, but we have negative one minus, and now we'll deal with this absolute value here. So we have the absolute value of one minus, and then the absolute value of negative one is one. So this is gonna give us, if we work this out, this is gonna give us negative one minus, the absolute value of one minus one is gonna give us absolute value of zero. And now we're gonna have negative one minus zero, which is negative one. For the next set of questions, we wanna express the quantities without using absolute value. So what we wanna think about for these questions is the basic definition of absolute value, that when we take the absolute value of a positive number, the absolute value just simplifies to whatever number is on the inside. So the absolute value of three is equal to three. But when we have a situation where we have a negative on the inside, a lot of people know to just take a negative and make it positive. But what's actually happening here, if we think about the piecewise definition of absolute value, is that anytime you have a number on the inside that's greater than or equal to zero, the absolute value of that number is just equal to whatever that number is. But when you have a number that's less than zero, like let's say negative five, technically what you're doing is you're taking the number on the inside and you're throwing a minus in front. So if we use this piecewise definition, this is minus minus five, which still works out to positive five. So what I look for when I'm doing these questions is I compare the numbers being subtracted. I know pi in this case is, well, in all cases, pi is roughly 3.14159 and it continues. So when we do pi minus three, I know pi minus three is greater than zero. So since pi minus three is greater than zero, it falls into this top category where the absolute value of this term on the inside is just equal to whatever the term is on the inside. So this is just gonna work out to pi minus three. However, if we follow this line of thinking to the next question and we compare one and square root two, just know that square root one is less than square root two and that's less than square root three, but the square root of one is one. So we have one is less than square root two. So what that tells us is if one is less than square root two, and let's say I subtract square root two on both sides, one minus square root two is less than zero. So this is just from number sense. So then what that tells us is we're taking the absolute value of something less than zero. And when you're taking the absolute value of something less than zero, to get rid of the absolute value, you just have to throw a minus in front of the stuff on the inside. So seven is gonna work out to minus one minus square root two, and if we simplify this, we could send the negative through. We'll have negative one, think of that as a negative one times one is negative one, and we'll have a negative negative square root two is a positive square root two. So it actually simplifies to this expression here. 
So for the last question here, we have p plus q plus absolute value p minus q. And we want to simplify this without using absolute value. So we have to analyze p minus q. We're told that p is less than q. So if we think about this, p less than q means that p minus q is less than zero. And that means that we're going to be falling in the second category here, where we have a value on the inside that's less than zero. So to get rid of this absolute value, we have p plus q plus, and notice our absolute value is p minus q, we have the absolute value of something negative. So that means to evaluate it, we drop the absolute value and we just throw a negative in front of p minus q like this. Now you could think of this as plus negative one times so that it looks better in this expression here, but that's how we get rid of the absolute value because p is less than q. If it were the other way around, if q is less than p, then p minus q would be positive and we could just drop this. But now we're going to simplify here. We have p plus q plus, and we distribute the negative, and we're going to have plus negative p, and then negative 1 times minus q is plus q. And notice p plus negative p cancels out. And then we have q plus q, and we can just say this is all equal here, and q plus q is going to be equal to 2 times q.